I'm going to begin this journey with sharing a story with you all. And you might have heard this one before, but maybe there's more to the story that you have yet to hear. And for the very few of you that have already heard my presentation before, well, congrats, you must be extra lucky today. So here we go. A young girl was walking on a beach. She suddenly came upon thousands of stranded starfish, each of them fighting for their lives in the beating sun with seagulls and sand crabs nipping at their poor little bodies. The little girl gently started to pick up one starfish at a time, carrying them back into the safety of the ocean. After some time of doing this, a man appeared from the distance. He looked at the starfish and then at the girl and asked, why are you doing this? Just look at this beach. There are way too many. There's no way you can save them all. With a starfish in her hands, the little girl looked up at the man smiled and said, well, it makes all the difference for this one. Now this story has been shared many for many years for the purpose of demonstrating that anyone can make a difference in someone's life, even if we can't help everyone. But wait, what if we change the outcome of this story? What if the man instead realized that if he also helped carry the starfish, they could, together, save more of them. And what if all the beachgoers started to help? What if the lifeguards joined, the families in their beach homes, everyone on that ocean street, the church on the end, the school on the other side, the local corner store up the hill, the businesses downtown, the local nonprofits, law enforcement, the whole neighborhood? What if? What if the whole beach community got involved and picked up the stranded starfish, held them and carried them back to safety? Well, the more people that get involved, the bigger impact they would have and the more starfish would be saved. Now, what if these starfish symbolized children? Just as the starfish are struggling to breathe and survive in an environment they do not belong, Kids are trying to survive with their trauma experiences, maybe having been abused or neglected, having to deal with the harsh, rough, sticky, icky feelings of trauma that they have. And what if the starfish just don't symbolize children, but adults as well? Maybe a family member, a friend, a coworker, a nurse, a school teacher, a single mom, a divorced father, a neighbor, how can we, as individuals, part of businesses, organizations, and community systems, best help our children and adults who are struggling with trauma? Let's put our starfish story on hold and break down the very basic concepts of trauma and understand, as a community, that we really do have to begin with the basics. And why is that? Well, because amongst many others, Peter Levine, a doctor in medical biophysics and psychology, whom has worked in the field of stress and trauma for over 40 years, points out that trauma is perhaps the most avoided, ignored, belittled, misunderstood, and untreated cause of human suffering. Why? Because like many other mental health concerns, what we can't see hear, touch, or feel ourselves, we will have a more difficult time relating and understanding. And if we lack basic understanding of a problem at hand, how can we help? So what is trauma? Well, let's define it. Trauma results from an event, series of events, or set of circumstances that is experienced by an individual as physically or emotionally harmful or life-threatening, and that has lasting adverse effects on the individual's functioning and mental, physical, social, emotional, or spiritual well-being. Kind of a mouthful, isn't it? But what is important to understand here is that trauma, including one-time 
multiple or long lasting repetitive events affects everyone differently because we are all different. What is traumatizing for me might not be traumatizing for you. And while I might suffer long-term consequences, you might be more resilient and able to bounce back right away and not worry about it again. So we cannot simply judge people for what they experience as traumatic or how it affects them. But one of the goals with establishing a trauma-informed community is to strengthening its people and create a healthy resilience that's needed on not only a personal level, but on a community le level. So what type of events can cause trauma? Remember our starfish story. For a starfish, the sand is too dry. The sun is too hot. The claws from the sand crabs are too sharp. The beaks from the seagulls are too strong. And the longer the starfish stays on that beach in a traumatic environment where it's been hurt or where it stays exposed to more harmful events, the more difficult their time will be. How can anyone possibly thrive in such an environment? For us, a trauma event is any event that we perceive as physically or emotionally harmful or life-threatening. It could be any of these and more. There are simply too many to list. And note that some of these are not just an event that happens one time, but they can be happening during longer periods of time and be environmental, such as never having enough food to eat, being around continuous family violence, or live in an unsafe neighborhood. Research shows that about 75% of people in the U.S. experience a traumatic event at some point in their lives that they indeed perceive as traumatic. That means only a couple of us in this meeting have been spared from trauma, while the rest of us have had one or more trauma-related experiences. I know that you're all thinking, how can it not be 100%? Well, that's because you have to remember we are all different. So how can trauma affect our lives? We know from research, such as the ACEs study, that trauma experiences in childhood with various forms of physical and emotional abuse, neglect, household violence and dysfunction, shows a powerful correlation between these experiences to greater risk factors or poor outcomes later in life, including a dramatically increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, obesity, depression, substance use, smoking, poor academic achievement, time out of work, and yes, even early death. These consequences on not only the person, but to our society are immense, not to mention the financial burden, most of which are preventable. So if you want to learn more about the ACEs in detail, I highly suggest that you sign up for a viewing of the resilience documentary to learn more about the importance of preventing and treating trauma. The resilience documentary explains the science behind ACEs and the destruction that trauma can have on our brains and bodies and how it creates long-term negative impact on our communities. We will be talking more about this at our next meeting. But for the purpose of today, there's no reason to go into the details of what happens with our brain and bodies when we're exposed to a traumatic event. Instead, all that we need to know is that there are multiple factors, internal and external, that shape the adverse effects we may develop. And these negative effects may happen right away or may have a delayed onset. For example, when a person experiences physical or sexual abuse, it often brings on a sense of humiliation that leads to self-blame, shame, and guilt. The person might develop anxiety and depression, having a difficult time with relationships, school, or work, maybe even turn to substance use and have behavioral difficulties, 
getting involved with DJJ or law enforcement, being too afraid to seek help as a trust for others have been broken down and they keep getting hurt because society does not understand. Instead of helping people around that might be worsening the situation and harming the person further, we might actually re-traumatize them, treat them as a number or label them. They might have to retell their story over and over again, not be given choices in services or treatments, not be seen or heard. We might violate the trust, fail to ensure their emotional safety, be non-collaborative. We might think we know what's best for them, but instead we might be using punitive treatments, coercive practices, and use language that puts them down. Remember what Dr. Levine stated, we avoid, ignore, belittle and misunderstand. As a society, we are more likely to re-traumatize than to heal. And why wouldn't a person shut down from the world around them if it was hurting them more? People with trauma, children and adults are all around us in our own community struggling. Sometimes they make poor choices and yes, they will need to take responsibility for their own actions, but when it comes to their hurt, we also need to take responsibility because we could be helping instead of hurting them more. We can bring them back to safety. So let's recap what I've talked about so far. Trauma is mostly misunderstood and untreated. Trauma occurs to every three out of every four people. Trauma can occur one time, multiple times, or occur long lasting repetitive events. It affects everyone differently in different ways. It impacts a person's ability to trust, cope, and form healthy relationships. It creates risk factors for adverse effects. Trauma-related consequences include an immense financial burden on both individual and society. These points, this basic, basic knowledge about trauma and its effects, is a cornerstone of build, building a trauma-informed community because we want to have healthy, strong, and caring adults in our communities with safe, happy, healthy, loved, and cared for children. So here we are with our cornerstone of understanding laid in place. So now what? How do we move forward from here? How do we build a trauma-informed community? Well, we will follow the ABCs. A, a trauma-informed community establishes a holistic strategic plan that links a community together for the purpose of surrounding, supporting, and protecting community members from traumatic events, re-traumatization and its adverse effects. B, a trauma-informed community engages people from all sectors, creating awareness and common understanding of trauma and its effects, encouraging further training through educational opportunities, identifies and establishes trauma-informed preventative measures, as well as identifies gaps of and provide quick access to appropriate services and supports. And C, a trauma-informed community is focused not only on individual and interpersonal needs, but community system needs, creating opportunities for positive social change, combating poor societal environments and identifies inequality issues and needs for community interventions and development. There are several models available for us to use for guidelines in becoming a trauma-informed community with understanding that each community is unique. This is a list of some of the communities in Florida that has established or are working on establishing their trauma-informed initiatives. We're not the first ones, but we're way before many others. What we do know, looking at all of these, is that creating a trauma-informed community has to be a holistic approach to include, in, to include individual, interpersonal, public, and system levels. 
And it has to be a collaborative initiative. We will need to take part of this together. So I'm here with you today. Not only get everyone on the same page, sharing the importance of becoming a trauma-informed community and providing you with an easy tool, the story of the starfish, to explain trauma to others around you that might not know much about it. But I'm also here to gain your support, the want and willingness to not only take part of this task force, but to do whatever you can to get, to get yourself, your business, your organization, your church, and so on, trauma-informed. You all hold a piece to put in place to reach this goal. So the question really is, not what can you do, but what will you do? How will you help our own stranded starfish here in Highlands County? Okay. So I hope I made a little bit of sense there. <laughs> And now you're, now you're all muted. Um, what we're going to do, you guys, is actually I want to go ahead and do introductions. And what I'm going to do is ask you to please introduce yourself, a little bit about you, who maybe you work for, what you do, but also share something that you're passionate about, something that really calls you, right? And then also, please share if this is something that you think that you would be able to get involved in and interested in and, and be part of. So I'll start, so I'm not putting anyone on the spot, but my name is Anna Richard. I am the Director of Children's Services for Champion for Children Foundation. And I am passionate about the well-being of people. And I'm passionate about baking. I love baking cakes. And I guess um, putting the two together, I bake cakes for our staff's birthdays. And that certainly brings smiles to their faces. So let's call that well-being without counting the calories. And I am 100% aboard uh, with this initiative that we're starting. And I hope you are or you will be as well as we move along. So let me pick on some people and let's go with Marissa. Marissa, you want to go first? Sure. Hi, guys. I'm Marissa Stam. Um, I am the chairperson this year for the Children's Services Council of Highlands County. And I'm also the executive director of Salam to Family Project. Um, much like Anna, I am very passionate about this work. Um, I, we serve children professionally um, through Salamta and families, um, but additionally, our, our family is a foster family um, and we are moving towards adoption. And so for me, this work is very um, personal as well as professional. And I think we have tremendous opportunities in our county. Um, and I'm so excited about everyone that chose to be here today. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you. All right, Sarah Beth. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah Beth. I am the manager of the Children's Advocacy Center and also the director of the Children's Services Council. Um, most of my job, or I guess all of it, is has to do with children who's, who have experienced trauma. So all, every child that we serve um, specifically has dealt with some sort of trauma and more often than not, is a victim of a crime. So I'm very passionate about that. Um, I'm so grateful that you guys are all on this call and are also care about trauma in our community. Um, I was born and raised in Highlands County, so I definitely am passionate about Highlands County and what our community looks like and the great potential that our community has. So thank you all. It's nice to meet all of you guys who I haven't met before. Thank you. All right, let's do Sean. Good morning. My name is Sean Bimel. I am the Community Resource Director for Big Brothers Big Sisters for Highlands and Hardy County. 
Um, before this, I worked for DCF for seven years, so my life pretty much revolves around kiddos also. Um, I also have five of my own. Um, so this is a super exciting Zoom call for me, um, especially since the pandemic um, has happened more and more of the kiddos that we see in our program um, are being not so much because they need help with their math or their spelling words. It's because um, they are all dealing with different forms of trauma in their lives. Um, so this is a great opportunity to really be able to interact with a lot more resources than just an awesome mentor. So I'm excited and thank you for inviting me. Absolutely, thank you for joining us. All right, Ivy. Hi, good morning. I'm Ivy Gonzalez. I'm with Tri-County Human Services, and I'm the Prevention Supervisor for Polk Highlands and Hardy County. And it what was you, nice to be invited to this meeting. What are you passionate about, Ivy? Oh, uh, at the moment, getting my paperwork done. Um, now I'm going through a period of being short-staffed right now, so I'm stressing. So, um, I need trauma help. So this could come in handy for me. <laughs> so, um, no, we, you know, right now we are working in the school. So um, myself and all of our staff, we're very passionate about working with the kids. Um, we have this year started doing suicide risk assessments as part of our intake process. So we're very excited in the schools finally this year and are able to provide those services. Wonderful, thank you for joining us today. I see Tiffany. Hi hey everybody, my name is Tiffany Fritchie. I'm the Children's Services Manager with Peace River Center. And I know Anna and she's delightful. <laughs> so um, I am passionate, I think, about understanding trauma. And so my role at Peace River Center, I supervise all of the children's services. So the key bus therapists, target case managers, our home to stay program. And what I find all over the place is that people want help, but maybe they don't understand trauma or maybe they cause situations for re-traumatization to occur. And so I've been really blessed um, to be able to do additional training. So EMDR and the CAC even hosted um, recently the Trauma Focus CBT. They allowed me to be a part of that. So just finding ways to grow in that skill set. Um, I also get the chance to um, train all of um, the center in trauma-informed care. So teaching about how even if someone's never said they've gone through trauma, like Anna mentioned, they probably have. And my trauma and your trauma, we may have gone through a similar situation, but it can be very different depending on the predictive factors. So that's my passion. So thanks for inviting me. And um, I'm so happy to be a part of this. Wonderful. It's happy to see you. Thank you. Uh, Mercedes. Hi, I'm Mercedes. I'm the program, or not program, but the admin at the Children's Advocacy Center. Um, I'm passionate about helping kids in all paths of life. I do have two of my own and have not slept since my two-year-old's growing her molars, which is super great. <laughs> I'm also the clerk for the Children's Services Council, so I'm hoping to get a lot of notes to make sure we have everything on our agenda. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us and keeping those notes are important. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Katie. Hi, my name is Katie Pippen, and I also work at the Champion for Children Foundation. I'm the executive assistant and graphic designer, and um, I am very passionate about uh, the upbringing of children, making sure that they're happy and healthy and that they have a good moral base. Um, I personally am passionate about bringing awareness to uh, digital media addiction and um, hoping to inspire other people to interact personally with their children and to go outside and play and be creative and just foster uh, learning how to entertain themselves instead of be entertained. And um, so that's kind of my passion. And I really love um, not only can we 
learn how to better interact with children, but adults as well, when we understand how trauma affects people. So thank you very much, Anna. Thank you, Katie. Um, Kelly. Good morning, guys. My name is Kelly Dressel. I am the executive director for the Children's Museum. Um, we are back downtown, in case no one knows where we're at. Um, I feel very unworthy sitting in front of all you guys. You do such amazing work. Um, I'm hoping to be a small piece to that. Um, we, our motto here is learning through play. And so um, I'm hoping maybe be, he can be a small piece in further initiative to create a safe space that maybe we could have or host. So um, I'm at your disposal. Thank you, Kelly. I'm so glad you could join us. We have Ramona. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Anna, for the invite to participate. This is really exciting. Um, I am the executive editor of the Highlands New Sun and DR Media um, Group. So Kelly, you feel like you're unworthy. I definitely feel unworthy here. Um, I am very excited about this initiative. Um, you know, I am very passionate about this county. Uh, I love telling the news of what's going on. But more importantly, I love telling the good stories because there are so many good things that are happening in Highlands County, such as this. So um, I, I'm definitely here to and help get this information out there whenever you're ready. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Ramona. It's an honor to have you all here. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, Carly? Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Carly Carden. I'm the Marketing and Business Development Manager for Peace River Center. Um, something that's important to me, I think, is interagency collaboration. I think there's a huge opportunity for agencies to work together to get the message out. Um, so I'm actually co-marketing today with um, Dave Owen from Advent Health. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave Owen. I'm the Community Assessment Coordinator at Advent Health Lake Wales. What are you passionate about? I'm passionate about educating the community about uh, behavior health and about empathy and caring for everybody. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you both for joining us today. That's wonderful. And then we have Chris and Dana. Hi guys, welcome. I'm Hi. Chris Haddon. This is my wife, Dana. Uh, we are the children's ministry directors here at Bible Fellowship Church in Seabury. Uh, we are also the director, directors of Hope Ministry, uh, which is uh, community-based children and family ministries. We are very, very passionate about children's ministry. We've been doing this about 17 years, um, and we developed, we developed uh, Hope Ministry two years ago uh, to bring hope and healing uh, through the Word of God uh, to the children in our community and their families. Uh, rather, we, we have a, a, a children's ministry program here at the church on Wednesday nights, and uh, we wanted to expand that into the community, go to where they are, and bring that healing and that hope into the community. And, about children. Uh, and one of the things that drove us to this ministry is, uh, for me, is understanding that so many of these children that we come in contact with every single day are facing all types of traumas at home that we don't see or hear about. Um, and, and the way we get in those and find out and, and minister to these kids is being there, building those relationships with them. So for us, we're passionate about building relationships with these, with these children, with these families, uh, and finding out uh, their, their hurts and ministering uh, to them through the gospel. And uh, so, so we're very passionate about that. We're so excited about this initiative because it's right up our alley. So we thank all of you uh, for being a part of this and we look forward to being a part of it. And uh, thank you, uh, Anna, for inviting us 
we we are so excited to be a part of this. Thank you both for you joining you us thank today. You. Dana is okay. <laughs> Chris does the talking. Dana, I'll get you talking later, okay? <laughs> All right, we have the roots. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Rooch Simmons, and I am the Community Engagement Specialist at Heartland for Children. Um, one thing that I'm passionate about is, uh, especially, you know, through my work, is uh, being able to connect families to resources and provide um, support uh, to those uh, in need. Um, you know, and uh, as uh, the name escapes me right now, but the young lady from Beach River um, noted, uh, you know, it's really, you know, about just, you know, how do we spread that message and how do we, you know, continue to educate and inform um, people, not only uh, some trauma, but resources that are available um, to those populations. Thank you, Varuch. It's good to have you on the call. And then we have, is it M or M? M, M? It's Emmy. Emmy? Uh, yeah. I. It's great to meet you guys. I was invited by Hannah. Um, I actually live with her. Um, but yeah, I am the middle school lead at Grace Bible Church, and so I work with a lot of middle schoolers, um, but we get a lot of middle schoolers who come from rough situations, and so this is very encouraging to me um, to learn how to work with them, but also like build up our small group leaders and learning how to deal with trauma as well. Um, I'm very passionate about middle schoolers and I really love Jesus, so. Awesome. Well, thank you, Emmy, for joining us today. And then we have Hannah. Hi, my name is Hannah. Um, I also work for Champion for Children and I am the Children's Services Specialist here. And I would say what I'm passionate about is making those um, that feel unseen or unheard, um, feeling seen and heard, um, and just making sure and reminding people in our community that um, they are worthy of our compassion and our kindness. Um, and that's just a really big deal to me is it doesn't matter um, like the situation that you're in um, or that your family's in, there's nothing shameful about that and I am not going to shame you for being there um, but I want to help you get through it and I want to um, keep up even after we help you through it to make sure that we're actually um, building that connection and having a long-term um, impact on the families and not just yeah I care about people um, and I'm super excited to be here like everyone else um, as I've been going through, we just started TBRI training with Marissa, um, which has been great. And I love that these are coming alongside of each other right now. Um, and kind of like Katie said earlier, there's just so many um, avenues that this can go down. And I'm excited because I know personally that it's not going to matter who I'm talking to or what line of work I am. There's always going to be a situation that I can apply these um, skills that we're developing. So, yeah. Thank you, Hannah. That's wonderful. Did I miss anyone? I don't think I did, but okay, I think I got everyone. Awesome. So Hannah brought up a great point. You know, it doesn't matter who we are. So you guys, Kelly, Ramona, I know you mentioned, hey, are we worthy to be here kind of thing. Yes. Let me tell you why, because when I first started this, I told Carissa, our CEO, I said, Carissa, I need adults. I, like, I need like mothers. I need ordinary people. I need youth. I need, you know, anyone, uh, because that's what this is all about. It's not just about being a director of some company or anything like that. This is about our community as a whole. And to do work in our community as a whole, we need everyone to be part of it. That's actually one of the most important points that I can bring up today. So uh, I want you all to know that you have a voice when you're here. 
I want you to speak up. Every meeting, we're going to start with sharing something about us because what we're going to be doing here, we're going to create some relationships. We're going to create a trusting, safe environment to work in as a group together. Okay, so each of you have a voice. If there's only a couple of us to speak up in each meeting, we are doing this totally wrong. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, um, I want just to share, I know, I don't know if you all saw the agenda, I sent it out a little late, but I wrote down on their group opportunities. All right. The, I don't like to say group rules, so I call it group opportunities, right? The only group opportunity I have is please be respectful when you're in here. Know that we are all humans. We have our own trauma. We're going to get triggered probably in here at some point, and that's okay. We're going to work through this together. We're going to be supportive, respectful, and be here for each other through this process. Uh, with that said, I want Marisa, I'm going to invite Marisa to talk a little bit, bit briefly about the history of how this all came, you know, to fruition. What, why are we here? What, what happened? Marisa, you ready? I am. Thank you, Anna. And I just have to say, you guys, we could not have a better point person leading out this group. Um, <laughs> The, the work that Anna has done already to bring us together has been absolutely remarkable. I mean, that presentation alone today, um, she's given it once before, and it was it literally knocked people over. Um, so very excited about everyone that God has assembled into this space. Um, I got here how this, how this kind of uh, task force, this initiative landed with Champion for Children. Um, this is my recollection. <laughs> this is my experience. Uh, there could be a lot that happened before uh, I came into the fold. But in 2017, um, I was sitting uh, for attending the, um, the, oh my gosh, what is it called? <laughs> the Children's Services Council. Children's <laughs> Services Council. That's what it is. The Children's Services Council meetings. And um, a huge nod to Heartland for Children, who has just done a phenomenal job of being so purposeful in their approach with trauma. And it was actually in those meetings um, where several different folks from Heartland for Children were sharing about the work that they were doing and, and, and the way that they were approaching trauma uh, with families and children. And, and through some of the initiatives and the steps that they were taking, as a council, we were invited to read a book called The Deepest Well, and it's by Nadine Burke Harris. Um, there's also a great YouTube video out there of a TED Talk that Nadine Burke Harris did as it relates to trauma and the effects of trauma on individuals over the lifespan. And several of us who sit on the council were really struck by what we learned. Um, you know, a lot of us know that, that trauma has an impact, right, in general, but when we really started to discover the true effects of trauma on individuals over the lifespan, um, the rates of everything from heart disease to suicide that increased with the number of adverse childhood experiences uh, that individuals had, it was so eye-opening and a little bit overwhelming. And as we started to take a look at some of the metrics of our county, we also said, oh my gosh, we have such a direct correlation here. What are we going to do with it? And so over the next couple of years, we just started entering into this conversation more intentionally about what does this look like to become trauma aware? What does this mean to become trauma informed? How do we integrate trauma resources into our community on purpose? And so this, this conversation continued through the Children's Services Council, and we really thought that it needed to become an initiative, but the Children's Services Council cannot house an initiative like this. That isn't what their mission is. That isn't what they're there for. And so um, Champion for Children, since they already serve um, such beautiful functions within our community, especially as it relates to prevention, um, they were willing to take on this initiative. Um, and here we are. As a result of, of several years of conversations and learning, um, we all gather here today in preparation to do some extraordinary things in Highlands County. 
Thank you, Marissa. That was perfect. <laughs> All right. So uh, we only have like 12 minutes left and I want to make sure we cover the important stuff. But um, one of the things is our, of course, our mission and vision. And that's something we have already kind of established to make this an initiative. Uh, and it's on your agenda, but I'm going to read it really quick for you guys. And if there's something on there that you're like, that doesn't sound right, or can we add this? We're more, more than willing to um, discuss it. Uh, but I'm just going to read them today and then you can kind of think it over. So our mission, to create a trauma-informed community based on shared values and goals through a community-based system of care, implementing trauma awareness, understanding, prevention, and healing. Our vision then becomes for Highlands County to be a trauma-informed, safe, and resilient community built on acceptance and healing that surrounds, supports, and protects children and adults from trauma, re-traumatization, and its adverse effects. So maybe a mouthful to, to talk about that today. So I'm gonna let you guys think those over. They're on the agenda. And maybe we can look at them again next time. But we also have our little logo. I don't know if you've seen our little starfish logo. Let me show you this one instead. Can you read that? <laughs> it says, I am trauma informed Highlands County. So because of the starfish story, because it's easy to relate to and uh, explain to others, we have decided that we're gonna use that as our logo for this initiative. What we have not decided on yet, which I wanna talk about before we end today, is an, actually, an actual community name, right? So, for example, maybe we should be called Hope for Highlands or Empower Highlands or, you know, something in that matter that makes sense, that um, has the word Highlands in it, preferable. So, something to think about. Does anyone have any idea that is just in your mind right now that you would like to throw out there? Okay, so what we will do, you guys, is if you can send me an email with any suggestions uh, before the next meeting, I think that's a good uh, starting point, and then we can vote and go from there. I, I would like to see a fun, positive, easy name that everyone counts like, ooh, hope for Hallings, or whatever it might be. What is that? You know, or I heard about that. That's, you know, and so forth. So that's, that's what we need to be doing, one of the first things. Next time, you guys, we're going to focus more on the how we're going to do this. We're not even going to start doing that today. There's just not enough time. I wanted to answer the question, why today? And I think most of you, if not all of you, understand why, right? Um, a couple of things. Like I said earlier, the more they're involved, the better. The better. We're going to be stronger together. Okay, so if you know someone that, hey, I know the perfect person for this, they need to get involved, let me know and I will add them to our list. We are missing quite a few people today, actually, even though we're already a large group. And this is so exciting, you guys. We have the county and the school board, everyone is on board and they're excited. Um, and I am just, I'm just beyond excited. I can't tell you how excited I am, actually. So um, let's talk about our future meeting schedule. Here's my suggestion. I actually want to meet twice a month. And you're all going, oh, eeks, that's crazy. That's a lot. Here's why I want to meet twice a month. I would like to meet on the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. The reason why is when someone misses a meeting, it's actually two months in between that meeting and the next meeting, right? That they attended. That's a lot of time. We have a lot of work ahead of us and I want everyone to be as engaged as possible. There's gonna be a lot of creativity happening, a lot of discussions, a lot of work on the ground. 
So is anyone against having meetings on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month? And keep in mind that if you do miss a meeting, it's only two weeks until the next one. Feedback. Primarily in the AM though. Can can it be in the AM? Because we do run a yeah, we can keep them the same time if it's easier on everyone, 11 to 12 um, on the second and fourth Wednesdays. Does that work for everyone? Okay. It's almost impossible to get everyone on, on the same schedule, to be quite honest. But that's the beauty. Thank you, Emmy. That's the beauty with, um, you know, if you miss one meeting, it's not a big deal two meetings and saying until next time. And Hannah is taking notes for us. So what I will do is I will send out the notes as soon as we're done with them so that you can easily catch up quickly. Will the sessions be recorded, Carly asks. Um, I would like to uh, record at least the first couple of sessions because as we have more people come in, I would like to give them the opportunity to know what we've been already talked about. So we're all on the same page. If you would like for us to do the video recording on each meeting, we can definitely do so. Does anyone, is anyone against that? No, we're good. So maybe that's what we'll do. And if we have someone that comes on board as uncomfortable, we can you know, talk about that again. All right, so I'm going to open the floor to open discussion, question, answers, any thoughts, anything that comes to mind, um, anything at all, you guys. This is your chance. Anna. Yes. Will they stay Zoom? Y yes, because, you know, we we did pay for that, so we are able to have all the people on the Zoom. Is there, a, is that a problem or nope. is there an easier way? Okay. Good question. I like Zoom. <laughs> I like Zoom too, I guess. I mean, honestly. I like in person too, but Zoom works really well. <laughs> you know, I love in person and I think we all miss in-person meetings. <laughs> And I'm hoping we'll get to that point sooner or later, but until then, let's keep it soon. Um, and I'm sorry that we lost the connection today, um, but we got right back on it. So, um, you know, there's always going to be little issues with the technical stuff. But again, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Let me know if there's someone else we can include. Just send me an email. Email is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, anything else? No? All right, I will be sending out invitations for the fourth of this month. We're, we're gonna do it then and we'll go from there. All right, thank you again, you all. Thank you.